In our continuing uh, series of interviews with uh, people at London Scottish, I'm delighted to be joined by Mark. So, Mark, welcome. Nice to, uh, to have the chance to have a chat to you. Now, a lot of people remember Mark as a great player uh, for Scottish and then previously for, for Northampton. Mark thinks he was probably the best player at Northampton during this time. <laughs> um, Mark, you, you retired last season. Uh, through injury, yeah, yeah. How was it? For, was that really difficult? Giving up like that, and you know, the daily training, I'm sure, wasn't a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> but how did that feel? Um, well, it was kind of through injury, but also for a lot of choice as well. Because having stepping into some more of a coaching position this year, I thought it was the right thing to do to give up playing because I was getting very close and personal with the players in this role as a performance coach. So it felt right to step away from the playing, and also the fact that I'd had a sort of long sustained back injury for a long period of time made that decision a lot easier um, but I think because I haven't actually stepped away from rugby I've stepped into a coaching role I haven't missed it because of course I'm still involved in it so there are elements of a Saturday afternoon which are really exciting I'd like to be involved in but then also I like seeing people who are younger and better than me uh, perform as well so um, so yeah it's been the transition has been surprisingly um, good actually I enjoyed it a lot. Now, you had a long time at uh, Franklin's Gardens playing yeah. for Northampton. What a great place to learn your training, wasn't it? Yeah, it was ama amazing. Um, I joined there when I was sort of wet behind the ears at 18. and We won the European Cup in 2000, which is an amazing experience. Um, I was too young to be playing, unfortunately, at the time, but then sort of debuted the following year. That was year. when Freddie Mendes was playing. For yeah, the Mendes players. and all that sort of sort of dream team in 2000 that won the European Cup, um, which is an amazing learning curve at that age. And that was a high scoring 6 3, was it? Or something? Uh, yeah, I think it was, I think it was 9 3, maybe. I'm yeah, sure. it was 9 7 or something, <laughs> yeah. epic sort of final. Um, but uh, yeah, played with a lot of amazing players and cut my teeth when I was when I was younger and then continued to play with a lot of great players um, for uh, you know the best part of seven or eight years while I was there. So yeah, I had uh, really fond memories and an amazing experience there. I presume people like John Steele and Geach and yeah. those coaches as well. Yeah, so yeah, I, mean, well, I, I crossed over with, with Geach, so I never actually uh, got to be coached by him, but by John Steele, really importantly by Wayne Smith as well, yeah, who was recently obviously the All Blacks coach with that, with that win um, back in the summer. But you know, learned masses of those, from those guys in terms of what great coaching is, what good leadership is, how to get best out of players, um, which is the, I guess certainly still influences um, how I approach the game as a player, but also now more doing the sort of psychological side of the players as well. It's, it's been really influential. We'll, we'll touch on that in a minute, but just carrying on with that Northampton thing there. A true rugby club. Yeah. A, a really true rugby club. And yeah. I guess one can say that about Scottish as well, because you can feel that it's a true rugby club. What attracted you to coming here in the first place? Um, when I was, you know, I came back from a year in Italy actually, um, and I um, decided I had to go semi professional because. My body was creaking a little bit, I was getting to that age. Um, I knew the club was really, really ambitious to get promoted in quick succession in over a number of years, which you know, we've done, of course. Um, I know a number of other Premiership players were coming here, so I knew they were taking their rugby very, very seriously. Obviously, I was slightly more concerned about playing in the lower leagues, but because so many good players were coming here and the, and the club sold it to me as being such an ambitious place, which of course is um, lived up to and lived up to that prophecy, um, that, which was really, really attractive. So. You know, for me, going to semi-professional was the right thing to do in my career, and also the fact that the club was so ambitious, which was what drew me here. Now, you touched on performance coach earlier. Yeah. What does a performance coach do? Yeah, it's I know what your boss asks you that. Yeah, well. yeah I'm sure he does. Uh, it's a pretty ambiguous title, the yeah, performance area, but um, if you like, it's, um, I'm not a sports psychologist, because um, you have to have seven years of credentials to state that but if you like it's a form of sports psychology coach and mind coach not a fake sports psychologist not a fake no, <laughs> no. Uh, but um charlatan no, no uh, but um but is it looking at players uh, so it, it, players? basically it's assisting the guys um, in terms of how they have their mental approach to the game how they do that consistent consistently how they build confidence around certain aspects of the game and develop into others a lot of stuff in terms of how the club works within culture so we did i did all the pre-season camp now we set down how we're going to be for the start of the year and do a lot of leadership development workshops with the players as well. So very much work looking at um, how the players approach the game from a psychological point of view, a mind point of view, and also looking at the human dynamic of things. Often when people look at rugby, they see the technical doing of the game. Of course, there's a lot of thinking around the game, or more importantly, getting people's people away from thinking about it and just doing it really well, so that's why. And is that about sort of decision making as well, uh, on the pitch and how people make decisions? How do they, you know, is it about that sort of thing as well? Sure, um, so, so of course the decision, make, decision making process comes in where they have to be good players and they have to be educated on how to make good decisions, like for example at number 10. 
but also how to make his decision making really clear is about how he made it, his mental approach to the game. Is his head full of clutch someone who's playing a game where it's really clear, concise, as you know what he's doing? So it's all about so it's using, his mental approach to the game. Sure. So it's about making giving people really clear, concise strategies that they can go to when they're under pressure and they can perform really clearly and concisely so they, they do well. Like Clive Woodward had that thing teacup yeah. clearly under pressure, yeah. didn't he? Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? Yes, I mean, you know, that's, I guess that's it in a very, very basic form in an acronym. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's what people have heard of from yeah. Unishid and stuff like that. So, um, but it's about how they use the, the, the small little tricks about how players can consistently perform under pressure by just doing some simple things really well um, and giving them the ability to do that through lots of different uh, psychological approaches, mm -hmm. tactics, strategies, etc. Working smarter, not harder, necessarily. Exactly, yeah. I, I mean, should explain that we're, we're not actually in prison here. We, <laughs> we are still in the main office. And or, this is just, or are we in a psychological ward? Well, we could be. I don't know. That's a, it's for people to decide for themselves, I guess. So, but you find it obviously hugely interesting. Yeah. So, um, this is my I'm, I work here one day a week, and then the rest of the time I work as a management consultant or in leadership developments within corporate settings, with Olympic sports and a lot of coach development work with the Olympics and the like. So. Um, even though I was a player here at Scottish and now coach and it's, it's uh, very much a one day we were. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really enjoying it, it's really fun. Now, Snowy yeah. is your nickname, where did that come from? Um, I think it's probably somebody who had dyslexia at Northampton, but... Um, <laughs> but people that could have been one of many. <laughs> yeah, that would be absolutely, in the rugby world. Um, but Mark Soden, someone interpreted that as Snowden, and then because I'm blonde, and, blonde and pretty pasty, it became snowy. Right. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, it's really that simple. Not to, yeah. And what's your funniest memory from rugby? Is there anything you can think of that sticks out in the memory? Uh, or, the... or repeatable on camera. Or repeatable um, on camera. Um, I mean, so, you know, there are famous Ronnie Regan stories that go around, of course, but was there someone at Northampton that was like that? Was um, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking of one I can share that's not too graphic. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you can't. Maybe, if you want to find out what the most graphic uh, story is, you can come up to Snowy on a Saturday and ask him the question, yeah. and uh, you'll be happy to share. Yeah, you'll get a much more graphic uh, version of the clubhouse. Right, so, yeah. really. Well, listen, look, thanks for the work you're doing here. I know it's well, but it's another side of showing just how professional London Scottish is in its approach, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch too. And, uh, well, you're a very welcome member. And I've just noticed you've got a huge hole in your jeans. I hope that hasn't shown on the camera. But there thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>